Hey, I'm Thrive here, and we're here today with the 13th century riding sword. Uh, it has a crooked hat uh, pommel, a lot of people call it that. Uh, they showed up historically uh, in a lot of artwork around the 13th century. Uh, one of our good friends, Roland Warzeka, uh, he is a HEMA master, has the theory that it might have been an early predecessor to the actual uh, later century long swords or hand and a half swords. And it does, it works as a perfectly ergonomic uh, grip. I mean, as you can see, I can hold the blade with one hand back here. Some of these were larger and small, and you know, this is probably the smaller size of them, but it works fine for that. And I would love to try it out that way. I think we'll do that today. Uh, we're gonna go out and try it on an analog ballistics gel head. The blade itself is about uh, 3.1 pounds. Uh, the overall length is 36.6 inches. Uh, the blade length is a 31 inch blade, which is very common around that time period. Uh, blade width is about 2 inches of 1.9 inches tapering to our point here. Uh, and the point of balance, I'd say, they say it's about 8 inches in front of the blade, so it'll be somewhere around here. Uh, it feels it as well. It's fairly blade hefty. It's going to give it a good, uh, good powerful cut, I'm assuming. So we should see that on our, our uh, analog ballistic shell head. Uh, it says the center percussion, uh, their guessing is about 21 inches, 21 and a quarter inches, which I'm assuming is somewhere around in this area. Uh, I would say this is a good cutter all the way from the tip back, though. I mean, except for the very, very tip, but anything back, I'm, I'm sure that the way it's designed, it's very much like a tight tin blade, even though it's a later century blade, uh, with the, the actual uh, lack of extreme distal taper or... Uh, actual profile taper has some uh, to get it balanced it still has a lot of blade heft that's why you have such a, a, a heavy blade for riding let's say if you're on horseback it'd be great for riding by and swiping at your enemies uh, it has a good reach for thrusting and the other thing is uh, I know he's uh, they actually state that it was mostly used one hand or believed to be I think it could have been easily used two-handed but it does have a one thing about it that's unusual to me it has a rounded hilt it's not uh, oval which kind of at first bothered me because I'm not a big fan of those types but due to the uh, the grip the way it's actually kind of a uh, it, it, it gives you a really good grip the way they designed it and you can tell by the quillion and by the uh, pommel exactly where the blades at so you don't really have to worry about that too much you'll be, you'll be able to keep your blade uh, alignment on from what I can tell. We'll try that out today and see how that works. But I hope uh, I hope you all enjoy it. We're going to go out and see what we can get done. So let's get started. Nice! Very nice! Uh, didn't quite get both sides on the thrust, but Kind of surprised me how clean it went through. That's why I overswung, because a lot of times this does have some resistance, but I kind of overswung, not realizing the uh, actual, uh, how easy it was going to just slice clean through. That is that is crazy. I mean, that usually you, you feel more resistance in that type of bottle. Oh, yeah, it just went beautifully clean through. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. It almost and surprised you how fast. the last cuts in this manner and thrusting in that manner. You can definitely feel the, the extra. Of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm extremely impressed with the blade. That's a that's a wildly good sword, and it it's I think it's going to be really good. Feels good in the hand. Yeah, I mean, I can see how you could use it for riding and swinging down too. The weight gives it a good, uh, I mean, a good follow through. So you definitely feel that as you came by with the the momentum of the force. You know, seeing all that, you know, splashing and stuff makes me excited to see what it's going to do to the head. Oh, most certainly. Let's get going, y'all. All right, we're going to start our test here with our gel head now, what everybody's been waiting for. Uh, and what we're going to do is start off with a one-handed strike. Uh, this is the riding swords. Of course, it's been used one-handed a lot of times when it's on horseback or with a shield. Uh, of course, we do know that it's possible. Uh, to possibly could have been used this way with the, the uh, pommel. But we're going to start off with a one-handed strike, see how well it can do it. I'm going to try a skull shot from this angle. It would normally be used with a cast blow technique if you were using it with a shield. Like the blade would have been thrown out. These are heavy blades from the 13th century and that's how they would generate the power. Not so much with stepping. Oh! 
very nice. You almost took the whole top half of his head off. I know. I'm extremely impressed. That is amazing. I don't know, but I think the blade more than did its job there one-handed. That is a very impressive cut. We have our blood leaking out right here, as you can see. But we've actually kind of uh, done something where we've cut through our uh, coconut skull, but we've only cut a small area of the actual blood where it's leaking out. So I'm sure as I move this blade, we should get a little bit more. Oh, that's all the way into the uh, into the spine because I have such a short, uh, longer spine today. That is very impressive. All right, as Roland Warzeka has proposed that this type of hilt, a lot of times, is shorter than this, that this might have been an early version of a uh, later, uh, later century long sword where it was hand and a half. But in one of the early hand and a half designs where you actually didn't have to grip it, as you see in some drawings, in some weird way like this, or they sometimes do that, or one hand over the other, or something like that, that they actually gripped it by the pommel. So if that idea is true of this type of crooked hat pommel, it may have been something where you could crank it and get the, gener generate the power the same way you would with, like, let's say, a long sword. So we're going to go ahead and try that idea. It is an awfully sharp handle. Let's see what we get, how much control we get. Oh. Uh, kind of kind of yeah, gaffed him a little high there. On that. Sorry about that. It's a little gaff. That's not I a big deal. Again. That was my Take bad. another one. Take another one. Thran's perfect aim, I swear. And I went higher this time and cut in the same area. Ha ha ha. Let's just try straight overhead. That's what I'm thinking next. Same cut, straight overhead. Go for it, dude. Oh, that was nasty. Now that time we got into some blood there. And the whole side of the skull was cleaved off. That looks nasty. I am impressed on that one. I have a quite small skull today, that was the problem. Yeah, it's not as big as the uh, coconuts we usually use. I was all we could find. Still. It's very tough to cut that way, though. Yeah, it's a hard target to hit, so that's a testament to Thran's perfect aim. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, yes! Wow, I think that has plenty of power in it. You could almost call that like the LaSalle Partisan of Swords. Oh, most certainly. Look how we cleft through that. We went clean through the skull that we've got, even though it's quite small this time. Straight down into the jaw, shattering it. Shattering pieces out of it, knocking it out. Of course, this is gel. You know, real flesh tear out like that. But that's hard. Oh, that's so graphic. I love it. It's the best part of this we job. We got it right on, straight down. Of course, we had some damage from earlier, so that's why we had That's so sick. You know what I want to see? I want to see that decap. Oh, sure, most certainly. I think it'll work great with this uh, hand, uh, hand and half stuff. Now that's what I call a clean decapitation. We went through our spine, and it's a perfectly clean cut. Beautifully clean. I'm extremely impressed. That actually aided tremendously having that ability to grip it that way over uh, just trying to swing it one-handed to get that clean cut. That was just beautiful. Grab our skull, our head. It's pretty nasty. And as you can see, it's a beautiful clean cut. Yeah. He's pretty uh, pretty nasty filthy and from dirty hitting the ground. The ground but he's got a clean, beautiful cut. Someday we'll have to use their donations to put something out here to catch our gel heads so we can oh, yeah. prevent that from happening. Like, it'd be nice to have some pavement out here on the ground. Yeah, he has totally been. Uh, that was a flawless decap, by the way. That was awesome. Oh, yeah, it was so beautiful. Just clean through. Movie quality. 
Hope you all enjoyed our uh, little episode. Uh, we love bringing this type of stuff to you. Uh, we especially thank Jarl Tim over at Medieval Shop. Be sure and go by and check out his, uh, his uh, wares, his swords, and uh, armor he has for sale. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, as much as we did. Farvel.